I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and thrive through the reset, the social, economic, and financial reset that frankly has already begun. And we've had a lot of questions that have come in, so I'm just going right to the questions. And Bill Earnhardt Knappen asks, is it possible that platinum would be viewed as a monetary metal after the financial reset? Well, Bill, anything is possible. Um, historically, it is a precious metal, uh, and actually it's primarily controlled by Russia. So it is, possible, but that would not be what history tells us. So personally, even though I have some platinum, it's mostly in the form of jewelry, I don't really have any platinum coins, though I have in the past, because it used to be the platinum was a lot more expensive than gold. When that first flip-flopped, then I did buy some platinum because I figured, all right, so, you know, worst comes to worst, I can always turn it into jewelry or, or something like that. Um, so... I don't, I can't really say for sure one way or the other, but it hasn't been, and it's even less of it than there is of gold. So probably not, but it's possible. And Gib Rogers asks, can I reclaim silver from plated silverware? You know, I don't know, Gib, um, but I do know where I can find out. So let me do a little homework on that. And would you save that question, Dylan? And let me let me see. I know you can reclaim gold, but I'm not sure about silver because silver gets used up in the process typically. Gold does not. So I would bet no, but I'll do a little research and, and let you know. And Brian Jenkins asks, since you mentioned Panama, they use the U.S. currency effectively as the local currency with a few of their own coins. If the U.S. dollar goes digital, do countries like Panama end up being run by the Fed? Well, actually, if you're using a country's currency in any form, then, you know, what you've done is you have pegged or tied yourself to that currency. And so, in essence, since the Fed is the head of the world reserve currency, uh, everybody is being driven by the Fed. But the answer would be absolutely, and it's, it's not being run by the Fed, but it's being certainly influenced by it, particularly if they're using our currency. But even if they aren't using our currency, it's still being heavily influenced by the Fed because of the world reserve currency status. And for those that are new to this, what that simply means is if you are an individual, a corporation, or a government going outside of your borders to buy anything like oil or lumber or steel or medicine, uh, well, this, this is no longer true, but you had no other option but to use the U.S. dollar to make those purchases. So for the U.S., it's been quite advantageous to be the world reserve currency, but that's also why we are obligated to, you know, run the trade deficits that we run as well. So, uh, Dead Bolthead asks, can you please explain what collectible, collectible gold is? Does that just mean in coin form, or is there a video I missed explaining why to purchase collectible gold and what it is. Yeah, I've, I have done some videos on that uh, dead bolt head, and it doesn't mean that it's just in corn form, but according to, you know, we really go by uh, the last confiscation in 33, where anything minted prior to 33 that is rare and unusual. Well, frankly, there is a finite amount of any pre-33 coins. Then in the early 60s, President Kennedy wanted to import a lot of gold, and he gave a similar status 
to foreign gold coins. And that's what I like to use personally for my barterable gold for like property taxes and things like that. Uh, so it has to have special value to collectors, be prior to 33 or prior to 48, um, according to Kennedy. And the reason why, I'll tell, I'll tell you really why. My Uncle Al, some of you, if you're new to it, you haven't heard this story, but you know, my Uncle Al was a major antique, antique dealer back east. And I've been a collector since I started literally when I was 10 years old. And one day my parents and I were at their house and he takes us into a back room and he says, and there were two huge floor safes there. And he said, if anything should happen to me, Aunt Bertie would be well taken care of for the rest of her life because of what's in these safes. And when I looked at what was in those safes, they were, you know, knowing I didn't know then what I know now, obviously, but I would say at a minimum, there were three monster boxes in each safe. So roughly at least 1,500 gold coins in each safe. Now, in 1964, it was illegal to hold more than five ounces of gold in any other way than the way that my Uncle Al was holding it. And I really didn't even recognize the impression that it had on me until one day when I was writing, and I said, and if you were alive in 1971 like I was, and all of a sudden, I had all of these flashes of remembrance. So what I'm trying to do is preserve my wealth and put myself in a position to take advantage of the opportunities that, that uh, present during currency life cycle resets, which is 100% what we're dealing with here. And since governments have, you know, they typically will confiscate your wealth. I mean, inflation is a confiscation of your wealth and your work. So it's hard for me to imagine that at the at the end of this whole thing, they're gonna go, oh wait, no, yes, we've gotten all the rest of your wealth, but you get to keep that. So since governments have a tendency to confiscate bullion, I personally don't own that. I wanna be in the category of collectibles, which is something that you can hold, uh, you cannot hold inside of an IRA because I want to be in the classification of the guys that write the rules. And you have some rare coins that can go for millions and millions of dollars. And quite frankly, anybody that can afford $8 million for one ounce of gold is likely to either be somebody that writes the rules or have the ability to influence those that write the rules. Additionally, they're likely to do it like this. Let's say that spots at $3,000 when they decide to confiscate. Well, they want easy cooperation. They don't want to force you because then you're aware and you might give them some pushback. So they might say something like, okay, turn in your gold. We're going to take your gold but we're gonna pay you $5,000 for it. Well, most people not understanding fundamental value, but they're locked into that nominal value would go, well, wow, hey, it's only worth 3,000 because they believe Wall Street and here they're willing to pay me 5,000. Okay, you can take it. And then like they did in 33, like they've done in many other places, after the confiscation, then they reset the currency. So um, this is why I personally only have collectible gold coins. That is not true for silver because I'm not as concerned about a confiscation of silver since it does get used up uh, during that period, during, you know, in industry. So hopefully that answered your questions. But yeah, we, we talk about that regularly. And KD asks, so Lynette, when 90% of the population is starving, the 10% who are not starving will be bidding up the price of rare coins in hopes of selling to someone else in that 10% bracket, a game of greater fool among the smart people who have the gold? 
Well, yeah, because wealth never disappears. It just shifts location. And when you have something, it's kind of like, you know, have you gone to an auction and you have 10 people at that auction and on a table there's 10 coins and everybody wants one. And so wherever the bidding opens up, well, that's what they pay and they walk away happy. But on another table, there's one and everybody wants that one because they want to be the one to own it. And so whoever is willing to pay the most gets it. But it's not really so much about that, KD. It's about, for me, it is about, because what are you going to do? Convert it into fiat when the fiat has no value? Oh, heck no, heck no. You're going to convert it into, if you're executing our strategy, you're going to convert it into income producing assets that you cannot outlive. What I'm really working on for myself and the strategy is really based upon sustaining your current standard of living. So you need your barterable portfolio for that. But then also on the other side of that, I want to build a legacy for my family and that's called dynastic wealth. And that's wealth that lasts in families at least 300 years. And you can think about the queen of England in that category. And look at what she owns. She owns gold. She owns jewels. She owns real estate, right? She owns rare collectibles, art, etc. rare collectibles. And there are three legs to that stool, real estate, rare collectibles, and gold. And arguably gold is the most important one because number one, it can help you acquire the other two. And number two, it can help you keep the other two. But here's the difference between land and gold. You, I cannot put this house on my back and walk away with it. So I can't, it's not, it's immovable wealth. That's how the, the um, central banks classify real estate in, and governments do too, especially. Immovable wealth. Real estate price um, taxes will rise. They have to look at what's happening to the cities, to the counties, to the municipalities. They have to, but the gold money will help, help offset that. So it isn't just, oh, well, we're just going to be trading back and forth. No, this is how you expand your wealth base. And that's really the point of holding the collectible gold coins. For me, that's my point. You get to do whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. But I have had a lifetime of experience. Thank goodness for my uncle Al, because he totally taught me how tangible trends operate and how they go from undervaluation to fair valuation, to overvaluation, to fair valuation, to undervaluation. This is where we, well, we're not exactly there. We're probably about here is where gold is right now. It is so undervalued, it is a gift. And what are we seeing? We're seeing central banks accumulating since the last crisis because they were just buying time. So who's the greater fool? Somebody that holds fiat assets, intangibles, or somebody that holds real wealth that runs no counterparty risk because these intangibles, that's all contracts. It's all counterparty risk. And Aussie Ali, if I'm butchering your name, please forgive me. Ali Vasari asks, are silver paper contracts due next week? Well, uh, you're, you're talking about the contracts on the COMEX and they typically expire the third Friday of the month. And will next week be the third? So I think that's this week, right? Two weeks. Two weeks? No, next week. Yes, next week. Yes, that's the third, uh, or not the third. Oh, no, that's this week. You're right, the third Friday. Yep. One, two, three. No, that was last week as the third Friday. Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong calendar. I'm sorry. It is this week. And uh, Stephen Regal asks, Will we get higher stock prices? Why should we be in gold? 
Well, you're, you are going to get higher stock prices because the Federal Reserve has targeted the stock market to rise. So they will print money. That new money will keep going into the stock market just like it did in Venezuela, who had the best performing stock market in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and part of 18 until they lopped off a bunch of zeros and the market, of course, responded to that and plunged. So you should be in gold because all of that other stuff is denominated in fiat money. And the more money they print, the less value it has. And officially, it only has three cents in purchasing power value left. And it only has any purchasing power value left because people still trust it. They go, well, the dollar can never go away, which is why as they transition from one system to the other, what, what's that new uh, digital currency being held in the Fed now account? Oh yeah, it's the digital dollar. You hold gold because it is the single safest thing that you can do. It runs no counterparty risk. That's why. I don't own one stock and I'm an ex stockbroker and I'm absolutely a technician. I'm not concerned about whether or not the market's going to go up or down. It'll go up until it goes down. But I am concerned with your ability to liquidate when you want to. Because if you do it when nobody else wants to, you're a rock and roll hoochie coo, you're fine. But if you want to when everybody else wants to, you ain't getting out. Do you not remember all of the trading halts that happened in March? That's a button push. You have gold in your possession, not a button push. And it's invisible to the system. That's why you do it. So uh, this week I was on with Mike at Rethinking the Dollar, and or no, last week. <laughs> Sorry, we're recording this, so... Uh, I was on with Mike at Rethinking the Dollar. It was a great interview, so I encourage you, if you haven't heard it yet, go listen to it. He asked such great questions. We were working with the Exeter Pyramid, uh, and that'll answer a lot of the questions that came up today, actually. And uh, I was also on with Leo Organz on the future money trends, and he really did such a great job this time. Really some great questions, and I know you'll get a lot out of, the, out of this inter that interview as well. Uh, now, this week, I was on with Eric at Trad Cat Night Radio, and that, frankly, is always an awesome interview. So you definitely want to listen to that. And next week, I'll be on a Coffee with Lynette with Mario and Echo, which is definitely a fan favorite. So we have a lot of great stuff that we're doing and that's coming up. But if you have any questions about this or anything else, go ahead and send them in to questions at itmtrading.com and make sure that you visit our blog where you find all the links and the blogs that I write. And if you want to talk to one of us, just click that Calendly link below and set a time. And, you know, look, this is not the time to be wishing you need a plan, you need a strategy. And this is the strategy that I created for myself based upon those repeatable patterns. But if you haven't spoken to one of us yet, quite honestly, I think you'll be pretty impressed with whoever you talk to at ITM. Because we've all been together for a long time and we are a great team and we've just made the strategy that I initially created better and better and better. So have a plan, we need that. Because without any doubt in my mind, it is totally time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we do that with the Wealth Shield. And that includes having physical gold, physical silver outside of the system. So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and that little bell next to it. We'll let you know when we're posting a video. And until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.